up until now, I've never traveled with a 24 to 70 F 2.8 lens. And the main reason why that is, is because it is big and it is heavy. Very uncomfortable to use on a Sony body because it would cause such a huge front drag. Ah, uh, arthritis. Yeah, my arm is actually getting tired. <laughs> But that all changed when Sony released the version two of their 24 to 70 F 2.8 G Master, which is nearly half a pound lighter compared to the version one, but it makes all the world of a difference in usability. And after my review, I managed to influence my own self to get it. <laughs> and a portion of this video is sponsored by PPA. So I brought this with me to Switzerland for a month and I'm very happy with my shots. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of them here. Mwah, they are beautiful. These are gorgeous. The colors are amazing. But to be fair though, Switzerland made it too easy to get these amazing shots. If you were to give this lens to a baby in Switzerland, boom, Anzo Adam Prodigy in the making. Plus, we also got to thank the weather too. Bright, sunny weather, cotton candy, fluffy clouds, nice breezy wind on a hot summer day. Now, 24 to 70, you probably heard a bajillion times. It's probably the best versatile mid-range zoom lens for any camera systems. And anyone who say that is absolutely right. During my whole time in Switzerland, I never felt I needed anything wider or tighter. 24 millimeter just seemed so perfect for these wide landscape shots. It never felt too far away where it would make things feel too incredibly tiny in the images. And very rarely did I felt a longer telephoto lens would have came in handy. If anything, anything beyond 85 millimeter already felt too close. But this right here, this is perfect. Now, of course, you can find similar mid-range zoom lenses that's lighter with a constant f2.8 aperture for nearly a third of the cost. The famous ones are the Tamron 20-75 and the Sigma 28-70 f2.8. Both excellent choices. However, I'm personally a stickler for my mid-range zoom lenses to start at 24 millimeter. 28 millimeter is just not wide enough, in my opinion. On top of that, the quality on the edges of the G Master is excellent, especially at 24 millimeter. Sharp corners, no crazy distortion, no strong vignetting straight at a camera. And that quality is held across the frame. Just look at the ridges on these mountains right here, the little shrubberies in the distance, the tiny Monopoly house pieces out there, the gentle ripples of the water and the frosted dipping dots in the snow. Now, the only thing that I'm bummed about is that these cows here can't run at super speed because God knows I was ready with my Sony A1, 30 frames per second, 51 megapixel raw burst. From my test in the 24 to 70 F 2.8 G Master 2 can keep up with fast paced action insanely well thanks to its latest extreme dynamic linear motor autofocus mechanism. But for now, we'll just have to settle for these slow cow photos. Stop! Sponsor time! PPA is a fantastic resource for learning how to take better photos and running a photography business effectively with over 900 online videos and tutorials that you can watch anytime. And this month, they wanted me to let you know about their marketing and sales tools that you can use to help grow your photography business. Now, I know when we're out there being creative and capturing the moments, we don't always have time to think about how we can expand our clients. Thankfully, PPA offers resources such as customizable brochures to advertise your business, as well as eBooks and video tutorials on how to build your branding, content creation, and digital marketing. They even have downloadable price lists to get you started on marketing and pricing your work. To learn more, check out the link in the description box below and use my code to save $25 off your PPA membership when you sign up today. Thanks again for listening. Now back to the video. So let's go ahead and talk about video. By now, it shouldn't come as a surprise that the newer Sony full frame lenses aren't getting equipped with lens stabilization. All stabilization are now done through the body, which I'm okay with because all Sony full frame bodies are equipped with in-body image stabilization. And because this lens here still has some heft to it, it does help with these fake dolly handheld shots. And the Sony A1 and the A7S III got that juicy 4K 120p no crop. Woo! Sorry, A74 users. The D-click aperture ring here is also really nice. If I need to get a proper exposure, I can get a much smoother transition as opposed to seeing those jarring changes when you would normally have to change your aperture through the dial on your camera. 
And this is insanely helpful because I stopped using ND filters for my video. What I would do now is just crank up my aperture to like f8 or even f18 almost, just to keep a proper shutter speed. And that's gonna be fine for places like Switzerland because we would want the whole landscape to be in focus. Now, a lot of camera channels tend to stress the need of ND filters because they want to use the widest aperture as possible for maximum bokeh. And don't get me wrong, I love the creamy background blur just as much as everybody else, but unless it serves to tell the story better, you don't really need it. And that lesson comes from my brief time with manual only lenses and shooting with film cameras. The lack of autofocus just makes it hard to shoot at like f1.2 and it forced me to be okay shooting at sunny f16. I'm more focused on my composition and the action within the shot. Now, the only time that I didn't enjoy using this lens was when I put it on a gimbal. I used it for about an hour and I just put it back into my backpack. Which leads me to say, if you've never used any other 24 to 70 f2.8 lens before, regardless of brands or camera systems, and you pick this up for the first time, it will still feel heavy to you. You won't be able to appreciate the newfound lightness of this lens as much. But to me, I appreciate the hell out of it and it became very tolerable to travel with and I can't wait to bring this on more trips with me. Once again, thank you PPA for sponsoring a portion of this video and thank you guys for listening to me professing my love for this lens. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.